Hello, my name is Vic, and welcome back to another Caden Live 2021 tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be talking about audio correction and audio adjustment. Audio is a very important component of your video and is often overlooked. I find that in my experience, audio is one of those things that can really add to the overall feel and vibe of your finished video. So just a bit of housekeeping here. Let's check our version of Caden Live. We are using version 21.04.1 at the time of making this video. To make sure that you have the same interface as I do, just go ahead and make sure that you're clicking onto the editing workspace and we should see the same thing. I'm just leaving my project settings at 1080p, 24 frames per second. But if you want to change the settings, you can simply go to project and go into project settings. Now, before we talk about our audio effects, I'm just going to show you a couple of different resources where you can download some free audio that is copyright free. The first place is your YouTube studio. So you go into your channel, navigate to YouTube Studio, and you can navigate down to the audio library. YouTube's audio library is amazing. You'll find a lot of tracks here that you can use. You can find sound effects as well. You can find all of the tracks that you've starred, the ones that are your favorites. You can even filter accordingly. So you can filter according to your mood. I usually like to have some happy music. I'll just click apply over there. And let's say I want to filter out some genre. I like to have the pop music and I wanna see all those tracks that are pop and happy. So I've got my list over here. You can start on which ones you like, can download whatever track that you want. Most of the tracks here, you don't have to credit the artist, but just make sure when you click it, some of them will have instructions on how to give proper credit to the artist. Another of my favorite resources is actually a YouTube channel called Audio Library. So if you go to Audio Library, you'll have a list of several songs here that you can use. These are great for any vlogs. The music is pretty well produced, very professional. You can also navigate according to the mood that you want. They've got playlists sorted according to mood. They've got playlists sorted according to genre as well. So we're back to our Caden Live over here and let's bring in a track that we're going to be using for today. Let's play this track a little bit to see what we're working with. So this is a video of a sunrise that I've done um, in Brisbane. It's mostly a time lapse. It's very dramatic, as you can tell with the music, you know, very quite emotional or whatever. And if you can see here, I've actually turned on something where I can always see the audio thumbnail. So this I find just helps me find certain points of the track that I think would be useful based on the audio waveform. If you want to turn it on, you simply right click and you can say, tick this box, always show audio thumbnails. I can turn it off as well if you just want the normal view. I'm gonna turn it back on because this is what I prefer. Let's bring this track down to our timeline. As if you notice here, Caden Live automatically splits your video and your audio track into separate tracks. So we've got V1, our video track, and then A1, our audio track. If you want to move this around, you simply right click you ungroup the clips. Now you can move your audio track separately. You can move, sorry, you can move your video track separately. You can move your audio track separately as well, wherever you like. If you want to delete your audio track, you just want to mute this out. You can simply select your audio track and press delete and it's gone. Or if you want to move it or realign it, you can do that as well. So let me just go ahead and group these two back together again because I want to edit them as a group. Holding down the shift key, I can select my video track and select my audio track, right click and group clips. Let's go ahead and talk about our audio effects. So I'm clicking on effects and clicking onto audio correction. And we've got a few effects here that we can work with. We've got fade in, fade out, gain, mute, couple of normalizing, pan, and volume. Fade in and fade out is pretty explanatory. It fades in your audio. So let's add in a fade in. I'm clicking and dragging this onto my audio track. If you want to view your fade in effect, 
over here in your composition stack, make sure that you're clicking onto your audio track. I can adjust my fade in accordingly to make it longer. You'll see this bar here extend as well, make it longer, make it shorter. I can also drag and drop this handle over here in my timeline. I can also add a fade out in another way. Instead of dragging and dropping the effect, I can double click. I can hover over my track and double click on this red bubble and that will add a fade out as you can see. I can try to preview what the fade in and fade out will sound like with or without the effect. So let's just try that. Let me just try and play with the fade out. It simply just fades out the audio. If I want to make that longer, I can make that longer. Let's listen to what it sounds like. It's just a longer fade out basically. I can delete it here if I wanted to, or if I can, if I wanted to, I can disable the effect to preview what it sounds like without the effect. I know it's still here visually, but if I press play, there's no fade out. Or there is a fade out, but just in the track that's built in already. So let's just delete these two effects. We don't need them anymore. Gain is just your volume, really. So increasing and decreasing your volume, it's pretty self explanatory. What it'll do is it'll increase the volume of the entire track to where the effect is applied to. Mute is a very simple effect. So let's drag mute in. And what that does is it just simply mutes our video. So we've got no more sound. That's one way that you can mute your audio track. Let's delete this effect. Another way to mute your audio track is also on the track over here. So in audio track number one, I can turn the volume off and that's going to mute our track as well. Or the other thing that you can do is also to ungroup the clips and manually just delete the audio track. Normalize here, according to the description, dynamically corrects the audio loudness as recommended. So what that does is if your audio track is very low on volume, it will bring it back up to the quote unquote normal volume level. And if it's too loud, it's also going to bring that down from the loudness back down to the normal level as well. So there's a single pass normalize and a two pass normalize. I don't normally use these two effects because I normalize my audio outside of Kden Live. I'm using a program called Audacity, which is also free and open source. Moving on to the next effect, we've got pan, which is adjusting the left and right spread of a channel. I don't do enough audio engineering that I've actually never used pan before, so I can't do too much information on this one. Now let's talk about key frameable volume over here. This is the effect that I find that is most useful in Kden Live outside of fade in and fade out. Let's drag in our effect onto your audio track. And we see our keyframes up here and our gain or our volume down here. So we can apply a gain, which is decreasing our volume by sliding this down or increasing our volume by sliding it up. It defaults back to zero decibels. So if you want to reset everything, you just type in zero decibels. When you're applying a gain like this, it's gonna apply it to the entire track. Notice that there is a bubble over here. So you see that red bubble. If I'm moving the gain down, that bubble goes down to represent my volume. If I move it up, the bubble goes up. Now keyframeable volume is really useful because it helps you to adjust the volume in specific parts of your track. The way you do that is to add a keyframe. So keyframes in a nutshell is just telling the effect where it needs to apply the effect at a specific point on the track. I'm going to explain keyframes more in depth in another video, but for today, we'll just cover a little bit of the basics. I'm going to mute my audio track over here because I'm going to do a bit of scrubbing and I don't want the audio scrubbing to interfere with my voice. So when I'm scrubbing through my timeline here, notice that the keyframe cursor is also moving accordingly. So just have a look when we move it forward, the keyframe cursor moves forward and when we move it back, it also moves back accordingly. I can also move the keyframe and advance it using the keyframe timeline up here as well. As you can notice, this moves accordingly. 
So just know that those represent the same location. So let's add a keyframe over here. The way we add that is to navigate to the toolbar and add keyframe. Now we see a blue bubble up here. There is another keyframe, which is a default keyframe that's already added over here. Now let's have a look at how the keyframes actually behave. So you can see here that the volume is set at zero decibels. So that's our default. Let's advance this a little bit and let's add another keyframe here. So we've got this keyframe over here and let's say we want to decrease the volume. So you'll see it ramp down the volume. Let's add another keyframe here randomly and let's increase the volume. So we see the volume increase. So that just means if I'm navigating through my keyframes, I use this toolbar over here, that at this point of the track, our volume is at a normal level. When we advance or when we play the volume, it's at mute right now, so you're not going to hear anything. The volume decreases at this point. You can see the volume decrease and then it'll increase back to the next keyframe. So that's how the keyframes will help you adjust volume specifically. What you want to see in this case is some sort of a V-shape. So let's say we're going to try to mute out this section of our track. So what I can do is I can navigate to that previous keyframe. So that's where we are right now. I can advance a couple of frames by using my arrow key. So I'm just going to advance a couple of frames here and I'm going to add another keyframe right there. Notice that it's pretty hard to see. So what I can do is I can use this slider to zoom in to that keyframe area. So I'm just going to decrease this so I can zoom in and see the separation of those two keyframes. Zoom in a little bit more so we can see those two separated a little bit better. So that's our first keyframe. That's our second one. And I can decrease the volume here. So let's just decrease it there. I'll navigate to my next keyframe. That's kind of where I want it. I'm just going to arrow back a couple of frames, add another keyframe. And in that area, I want to make the volume low. And then in this next keyframe, I want to return it back to the normal. So we'll see kind of this U shape that's being formed. So our volume is normal level, then our volume drops down in this part, and then it comes back up. We've got this extra keyframe here. So what we'll do is we'll just navigate to that and delete it so that the example is clear. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a listen. So I'll push this back over here. We'll unmute this and let's have a listen to what this sounds like. So as you can hear, the volume drops down and then drops back, comes back up. If you want to increase the fade in, you could drag this a little bit further out if you wanted. If you think that that volume adjustment was a little bit too abrupt, you can drag these two out. And because we've dragged them out, we want to make sure that the volume returns to zero decibels. Sometimes we're not very accurate with our mouse dragging. So I can navigate to that keyframe, return it to zero. I can navigate over here and check. I want it to be minus 30 decibels. Let's check the other one. I want this to be 30 decibels. And then this one to be at zero. So if you want exact volume, exact numbers, that's how you do it. You just simply have to type it in. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So we've got that gradual volume down and gradual return volume up.
So that's a great way to do it. You can insert whatever audio track over here, like a voiceover, so that when you're speaking, it doesn't get interrupted. I'm gonna delete my volume effect over here and I'm gonna do another example, which is totally replacing the audio of your track. So what we can do is we can click onto our video clip over here. I can right click, ungroup the clips and I can totally rip out the audio by selecting the audio and pressing the delete key. Now that it's gone, let's move this to the very front of our track. I'm gonna go back to my project bin and I'm gonna add this totally new track here because I want to totally replace it. So let's drag this track down and then what we can do is we can select both. So I'm using, holding the shift key, selecting both, right clicking and grouping the clips. Now we've totally replaced our track in our clip. Let's press play to see what this sounds like. As you notice, it totally changes the feel of your video. Well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I'm not very good at demonstrating audio. It is one of my weak points in video production, but Caden Live does have tools that allow you to manipulate the audio and improve the feel and vibe of your video. I hope that you learned something today. More tutorials to come in the future if you learned something. I would appreciate it if you support the channel and the best way to do so is simply to like the video, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.